Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And we're here for this season preview now. Let's get into this schedule first. So what I try to do with this schedule is get as many teams into the schedule that Coastal Carolina has this year in real life on their schedule because remember this is the first year they are actually bowl eligible at the FBS level so they do play a couple of teams that we did put on this schedule but I try to get it as close as possible starting out with Navy and you know Navy they run that triple option and it's going to be pretty tough to stop for our first game and we're going to be at Navy for that game and that's actually a conference game our first game of the season is a conference game then we come home and UMass is a team that Coastal Carolina does actually play in real life so this is one of those teams that they do play so we get kind of it's not going to be an easy game don't get me wrong but it's an easier team that we get at home at least and i'm not going to play any fb f uh cs schools so i'm gonna, just going to leave them off my schedule but next we we'll play wake forest so we have three straight games coming up in the north in the carolinas as we play wake forest and then we go on the road to play the SEC ranked number 23 South Carolina Gamecocks. So we have two tough games right in a row here in the middle of our schedule. So make your predictions. I mean, what do you think we're going to go in these first four games? So moving on to the conference. Now we play Arkansas State. Arkansas State is arguably the best team in this conference. So it, that's going to be a tough game. I can't lie. That's going to be a tough game, but at least it is at home. So our first game at home in the conference is versus the toughest team. So at least we have that advantage. Remember, we did put East Carolina in the Sunbelt Conference as well. We made that modification because we wanted it so that we get a full uh east versus west and uh we'll look at the how the conference looks later but uh right now we play east carolina another carolina team going into the Sun Belt as well then we play middle tennessee state another team we added in here i got trying i tried to keep it in the region so you'll see how the conference looks uh louisiana monroe uh actually there's a louisiana raging cajun it looks like we play them on the road then we play texas state georgia state Troy and then we finish the season actually Appalachian State might be the toughest team to be honest I, I think it's between them and uh Arkansas State I think those are the toughest two teams in our conference I mean everybody's gonna be tough because we suck right now I mean let's be honest we suck so uh now let's get into the nitty-gritty Let, let's get into this recruiting board so when we look at this recruiting board I added 25 guys let's first look at our pipeline states um, if you look at our pipeline states, based on where we're located, we're located in South Carolina. So the neighboring states, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi are all pipeline right now. The thing is, I do want to actually gain South Carolina and North Carolina and maybe Tennessee as our pipeline states as well, just because they're all within the region. Uh, I don't want to really go out and recruit outside in the West at all because I know I'm going to get the most points, especially since I'm going after just one stars right now. Uh, I'm going to need that pipeline advantage. So let's actually look at who we had on our board. So before hopping into this, man, I want to tell you guys, so when I'm recruiting these, when I'm making these recruits, it's kind of hard to gauge what star they're going to be because NCAA football didn't do a good job of that. When you're creating these prospects, they don't tell you what star they're going to be. So I actually kind of made some of these guys a little bit better than a one star, like two stars, even some three stars sprinkled in. But I mean, nobody is rated too high. So first, we're starting out this with Jack Kleck. And you remember Jack Kleck from the Marquette dynasty? He's coming in as a transfer. So hopefully we can pick him up he is the 84th ranked tight end. He's a Juco. He's going to come in as a Juco sophomore. So you can see right here, we don't really know what his ratings are going to be coming in, but I know he's going to be good since he's a Juco and that he's going to be our top prospect on the board because we're going to need to replace uh, the tight end position. Speaking of another Juco, Armin Hammer is going to be our second guy. So these are going to be our only two Juco's on the board. This is a guy as a middle linebacker. He's a two star, six foot, 230. You can see right now I unlocked some of his attributes, uh, 65 overall right now, uh, but he is going down right now, minus two overall. So it looks like he was evaluated at higher than he actually is going to be. So here's my one of my favorite guys here, a receiver. So remember, I'm, I'm graduating three 
senior receivers. So I'm going to need to replace some of these guys at receiver, starting with 6'4", 190, Justin Johnson. He's a skinny guy, 183 ranked receiver. Uh, right now, I can't see his ratings. And I just want to tell you guys, I didn't make up these ratings. But basically, what I did was compare them to another dynasty and seeing how some prospects look based on what the computer generates so i basically just copy those over so that i didn't give myself a competitive advantage or anything like that but the thing is like none of these guys are really interested in my school right now you can see uh the interest here i mean none of these guys are really interested so it's gonna be kind of hard to recruit these guys and i'm not gonna i told you i'm gonna make this a challenge i'm not gonna add any guys to my board throughout the season any the only time i might add some is in the off season i might do it in off season but not during the season so this is gonna be my board for the rest of the year so moving on anthony brunson uh this guy's a cornerback and remember we have a couple of senior cornerbacks going off uh leaving our team next year 180th ranked cornerback out of raleigh north carolina like i said we want to get that north carolina south carolina pipeline connection robert johnson Somerville, South Carolina. He's a three star as well. He's 59 overall right now. You can see, I mean, he's got D man coverage, D zone coverage. We'll see how it turns out. One of my favorite prospects and one of the most interesting, he's a 5'7, 160 guy, Alan King out of Washington, D.C. You can see we do get quite a bit of, uh, Quite a bit of extra points here 170 so that's quite a bit and you can see here he's a 5-7 guy but he's intriguing because he's got b speed b acceleration b agility b stamina so he might be a guy i can maybe use in the return game it looks like his coverage skills aren't that good you can see his zone coverage is 66 right now and he's only 5-7 so he's a small guy he might be a guy i even might red shirt a lot of these guys might be red shirts so moving on connor eddings it looks like uh eatings probably it looks like he's from america's georgia uh sticking in that southeastern part of the country he has 70 zone which is all right 67 man i do want to see what he can develop into he looks like a red shirt though uh looking at byron dunlap um, I, I'm I'm looking at him right now. D catching, nothing really jumping off the board right here. Um, just another tight end, but we do need some bodies at tight end because we are graduating a senior, our starter, Alex Meredith, uh, the 191th ranked quarterback, Duluth, Georgia. You can see these guys aren't rated too well, but we probably can develop a lot of these guys. Uh, Kier Patterson, it looks like he's a 5'11 D end. He's got some. Uh, weight to him 250 pounds as a dn and only 511 out of north carolina like i said i'm trying to get north carolina is that's that pipeline state you can see his attributes are pretty good he's a rated 60 overall so let's see if he sticks around 60 overall brandon jones a cornerback so he's got b speed b acceleration um one thing i like about him he do, does have 70 pursuit that's actually important as a cornerback especially when recognizing run plays when getting off of receivers that's pretty important now moving on to quarterback so we do need to address quarterback we do have two seniors graduating so that means we're gonna have two on our roster so we do need to get a quarterback here the first one out of memphis tennessee jack soul a pocket passer though um d speed but i want to see what he can do throwing the ball you can see he has 70 throw accuracy he's 55 overall right now so he's probably going to need a year to redshirt and especially with wesley david and uh Kashawn Curtin. i mean i'm gonna need some guys to develop after them and you never know one of these guys might end up starting as a freshman next year it's probably unlikely but we'll see oliver saxon out of memphis tennessee another guy out of tennessee at number 84 ranked outside linebacker um one thing i do like about him his finesse moves are at 70 we don't have a lot of pass rushers so hopefully that sticks at a c and he turns out to be a good pass rusher josh howarth uh guard 71 pass block right now i do like what he brings 114th ranked guard we'll see how well he turns out to be uh we do need a kicker we do have a uh senior kicker right now so i do want to look take take a look at him right now you can see c kick power d kick accuracy andrew chapman 61 overall 76 acceleration uh i don't know what he's going to be though he's 61 overall right now but i can't see how he's going to stick at 61 i mean nothing right here tells me that he's going to be 61 but we'll see blake fisher a middle linebacker another middle linebacker and these guys might convert to dns they might convert to outside linebackers because we have a ton of middle linebackers we do have a bunch of seniors so we'll see how that plays out Derek armstrong we do need some safety help 
for depth. He does have 68 zone coverage. That's kind of a good sign because I can redshirt him, and by the time I redshirt him and he starts playing, his zone cover should be at low 70s. We'll see how that goes. So the second quarterback right here, Max Johnson, 60 overall. He's another pocket passer, see throw power, D accuracy. I hope that goes up, actually. And he's not really a speed guy, 52 speed. So we'll see how he develops. And the last custom recruit here, because we can only create 20, Alex Snyder a tackle and I do want to see what he develops into because he's 6'7 278 I mean that's a big guy but the 197th ranked tackle I don't know how good he's going to turn out to be so now we move on to uh five guys that were interested in my actually they weren't even interested they were just one star guys that I wanted to add to get those extra pipeline guys but there's no guarantee that I'm going to get these guys because none of these guys are interested pretty much you can look at Stephen Johnson 54 overall this guy's actually interested Nick Bowling uh you can see he's the 183 ranked tackle I haven't unlocked any of these guys ratings Here's another one, Mark Wright. Um, I haven't unlocked any of his ratings either. He's from Tennessee. Atmore, Alabama. Looks like this is a deal breaker that we're close to home for him. Uh, but we are, like like I said, we're not even close with these guys. And this guy's even 47 overall, but we're first on his board. So that's why he's on the board. So he might be he might be a gem where he goes up by five, six, seven overall. Hopefully he is. We'll see when he, we unlock his ratings. So let's get into the depth chart now. So first, looking at the quarterback competition, and I'm going to show some clips and practice of these quarterbacks because I really was torn on who I should start because Marcus Milam, I like what he did. He's a senior, and I kind of trust that senior leadership. He has good throw power. He has decent throw accuracy, but he can run the ball a little bit, 73 speed. Um, I definitely anticipate myself putting in both quarterbacks, uh, maybe even using some type of two-quarterback system. You never know. And with players this low of overall, you do have to run plays to get their confidence going because that's when they start making accurate throws. And especially with the sliders that I use, it's going to be tough. So looking at who I'm going to start here, Wesley David, he's a pretty good quarterback. He's got a strong arm, but only 60 throw accuracy, 80 throw power, 60 throw accuracy. So right now, I'm actually going to start Marcus Milam, and there's a reason why, because like I said, he's a senior. I think he's going to come in with more confidence. Wesley David, with that 60 throw accuracy, just isn't going to get it done, at least not right now. Maybe he's one of those guys that plays better in the game, but I need to see that from him, and Marcus Milam looks like he is just kind of a better quarterback at the moment right now. So we'll see. Emilio Garcia drops down to that third quarterback in the depth chart, and then Kashawn Curtin. He's going to pretty much use this as a redshirt year. It's not technically a redshirt year, but he's going to be uh, in that four-string spot. So he might step up if somebody gets hurt or something. So looking at running back, I decided to put Yates. And what the funny thing about this is that Yates was actually the guy that I wasn't that sure about. I didn't know if he was that good, but I went back and watched the film, and he was pretty good. I mean, he had good burst. He was getting pretty much getting hitting the hole better than Garcia hit, than Cyric is hit, and Kuzo actually did a good job as well, but he was a smaller guy, and I do need a bigger frame. Cameron Yates is six foot two twenty. Kuzo is 5'7", 160. I mean, he's a small guy, so I'm actually going to use Kuzo a lot in the shotgun. They're both going to probably split time. It's going to be probably 50-50, but I like Kuzo uh, coming out of the shotgun. Yates under center, so we'll see how that goes with Javier Garcia backing them up. So looking at fullback Marcus Jefferson, Brett Mason's going to kind of get a good look at the backup this year, uh, basically under the senior tutelage there. But looking at receiver, this was kind of a tough decision here. Mason Wynn, I'm going to put him at the number one simply because he's a great blocker. I like what he does blocking. Amari Manuel showed me enough that he's going to be the number two guy. He's going to be on the field with a lot of reverses, a lot of screens. He's going to do that. He's only 78 speed, but he can make people miss. That's one thing I like about him. And then was there any debate that Sam Forbes was going to be a starter this year? I mean, he's going to be in the slot, going to be lined up in the slot a lot. Uh, and I plan on getting him the ball a lot. So the fourth receiver was kind of difficult, but the thing is I'm going to sub a lot on offense and defense, so there's no real competition here because they're both going to touch the field, and C.J. Goodwin, I have him before Ashen Cohen, or Pac, Paco Ashen. Look at that. I'm thinking of my last dynasty. And then Cameron Dixon, the tight end, the freshman actually is going to be that sixth guy. So uh, looking at tight end, Sean Daquan and Mari Moriarty are going to get the majority at tight end. And then Dixon's going to kind of get leftovers a little bit. 
Looking at left tackle, the line was the hardest thing to really evaluate. Lisi is going to be at left tackle. He was pretty good. I, I was showing you all the highlights from him. And you know, one thing I just noticed, uh, Connor Kangas had 78 awareness. So that's maybe a guy that if somebody messes up, he might be next in line. So Luke Balling is going to start at left guard. He is lined up as a right guard. Um, Okan has, he pretty much has four years of eligibility three years after this season so if something did go wrong with our offensive line he needed to step up he could definitely step up but I do want him to develop a little bit I don't want to crush his confidence and one thing I noticed in one of my other dynasties is that sometimes if you play players too early their confidence just get crushed and they perform pretty bad so we don't want to do that so looking at senior or center we have a senior Luke McDonald that's no debate there uh, and then at right guard this was kind of a tough decision I decided to go with Brandon Rodriguez he did pretty good when I saw him in the game and he has higher awareness I need a higher high awareness guy to pick up blitzes uh, Luke Balling is going to back him up and then uh, Maxwell Gale is actually going to play right tackle I like what he did uh, he had a couple of pancakes he has good acceleration so I, I like what it, he has so looking at left end so this is an interesting one I'm actually going to start the senior Sam Legate but like I said I'm going to sub in a lot on defense so that means that Danny Armstead is going to be in a lot with formation subs especially on pass rushing situations I'm definitely going to have Sam Legate in there probably on like first and second downs and probably on running uh, formations because he's better at stopping the run Danny Armstead will get a lot of playing time rushing the passer and look at this I mean I have him lined up at the other end already and the thing is I have Brett McDonald like I said I have a lot of these guys just subbed in in certain packages I did a lot of formation subbing and uh, Brett McDonald is going to be in on a lot of running formations. so even though Danny Armstead's there starting at right end he's he's there a lot in passing situations and sometimes in a running situation. So looking at defensive tackle, I thought there was a pretty good uh, distinction distinction between who the best D tackle was and who was the worst. And I think Frederick Billups was definitely the best. He clogged up holes. He created lanes for our middle linebackers to run through. He has the highest awareness of any player on our squad at all. So he's going to be a sophomore. He's going to be pretty good at that D tackle position. And Alvin Jefferson is going to be that second D tackle position. Uh, so Jorge Ponte, I do like what he brings. He does have high strength. But I have to see more from him. I didn't see too much in the spring game. Danell Hudson was interesting. So he was in a, on a lot of tackles. And I like what I saw. And I kind of like what he brings to the table. He brings kind of a uh, smart, savvy, outside linebacker type of feel to it. He has the highest awareness out of all the linebackers here. And uh, we do have a couple of middle linebackers backing him up. Starting with Mejia. And Mejia is going to kind of back up two positions and he's going to be the first linebacker on the field when somebody gets tired because looking at middle linebacker Ryan Marshall the smart sophomore he's good in coverage he's good speed he's probably our fastest linebacker I like him at the starter Brock Thompson showed me enough that he's going to be that second middle linebacker next to Ryan Marshall and then Kevin Mejia like I said he's going to be the first one on the field in rotation so looking at uh, right outside Adam Pritchard did a pretty good job I mean he's he solidified that spot looking at cornerback or Orlando Norman at cornerback, 60 overall. Preston Mays as well. He's going to be the backup cornerback. Not the backup. He's going to be the uh, lineup on the left side. And then Landon Watkins actually showed me that he can tackle pretty well. So I like him in the slot. Along with Anthony Lawrence. Lawrence actually missed a lot of tackles in the spring game, which kind of brought him down a little bit. He's, our, he's better rated than Landon Watkins. But he missed a lot of tackles, and I need to have that depend dependability in that slot to make tackles. Especially when I'm sending blitzes, I want to be able to get sacks and create opportunities for our defense. So Darius Terry is going to start at free safety. No surprise there. Zorzula is going to kind of roam around uh, in that backup role, and Cedric Granger at the starting position at strong safety. So looking at kicker, no surprise here. We only have two guys. And then looking at kick return, Zorzula is going to get his chance at kick return. He is our fastest guy on the squad. Preston Mays backing him up. He is a junior, so he's going to get faster come next year anyway. And then Zorzula is going to return punts as well. So that's basically going to be it for this episode. I mean, let me know what you guys think, man. This is, this is going to be a tough season. But, I mean, I think we can do decent. We'll have to see. But you don't want to miss next episode. Hit subscribe, hit that like button because we're getting into this season right now. So let's get it. Let's go.